I belong to the company called AECOM India. We have a large number of people working in the country, very large focus on infrastructure. In some way, we are the leaders worldwide in designing, master planning, and getting executed infrastructure around the globe. Some of the outstanding projects that we have done beyond the London Olympics is the Rio Olympics that's coming on now. But what is closest to my heart is the river of life in Thailand, a river something like the river we see in our country, neglected, dying, because of pollution, because of neglect, completely revived and become the river of life. And that's where my company brings to the country experience, expertise, knowledge of having done it and willing to do it. And we are very glad that with our present Prime Minister, there is great hope for the nation. What I'd like to share with you what I do besides the AECOM, I also belong to the Indian Green Building Council. I'd like to share with you what we are doing, the story of India, or the story of Bharat, as I like to call it, because India beyond the shores of Delhi, Mumbai, Calcutta, and Chennai, the India truly, what is represented beyond these four metros, what is happening in these parts of the country in terms of infrastructure, in terms of going back to our cherished values of sustainability. So I belong to the Indian Green Building Council. The council was started in 2001 on challenge of then President Clinton that did we not have a green business center. So CII, the parent body for the IGBC, took on the challenge that we will not only create a green business center, as very proud Indians we said, we will create the world's greenest business center. We did that in Hyderabad, and that's where our journey started, with a tiny footprint of 20,000 square feet. The idea was, when these giants from world over come over to India to set up the base, which many of them do now, where do they go to learn what is Indian method of construction, what is sustainable, what should be Indian practices, what are the Indian materials available to us, so if I bring a picture from Microsoft in Chicago, maybe Google in California, and we want to set up a base in Hyderabad, Bangalore, Chennai, where do they go? And that was the objective we started our Green Business Center. I'd like to share with you the story, how we started with a small 20,000 square feet and where we grew, and how does it affect the country's infrastructure. We took that challenge, with the then government of India, that by 2015, every Indian will contribute one square foot of green building. We had only 20,000 square feet in our pocket, and we are a billion people. Daunting challenge. But the story of India is quite amazing. It did not take me till 2015 to get to a billion square feet. We got there four years ahead of time in 2011, be, join the billionaires club into the green building movement in the country. We got the critical mass and we quickly realized it will not do. Because I may make a green building, but what about the surrounding? If I leave all my problems around, if I make a green building, but no concern for the neighbor, for the community, it will not do our country good. So we embarked on the journey of green infrastructure what we call green township, green cities. And my company, AECOM, currently is involved in a lot of work for DMIC. I'm very glad that the ministry at that point, some years ago, started the Delhi-Mumbai Industrial Corridor. It gave designers, builders, architects an amazing opportunity to design greenfield cities. Doesn't happen in too many parts of the world. Many cities are already built. Goodly or badly, good or bad, working well, working may not be so well, but we had the opportunity and we still have the opportunity of doing it first time right. And what IDBC did, which I belong to, is to learn from the mistakes of many of our neighbors, many countries of the West, what did not work for them. For example, the model of creating a central business district in the downtown and people living for miles and miles beyond that and commuting every day, obviously polluting the environment. 
creating hardship for the population that is around. So we quickly adopted the model for green city. And what I heard from Walt Disney, I had the opportunity of studying in the US in the 50s and the 60s. And had amazing experience of hearing people, visionaries, who laid the guidelines what the future cities of the world will be like. One of the things that stayed with me was they'll be self-contained. Whatever they require, energy, water, resources, will be generated from the city. The employment will be generated within the city. So my youngsters will not have to go out from the farms, from the areas where they work, to the cities in search of jobs, creating these ghettos and slums, large unemployment and huge commuting problem. Ladies and gentlemen, this is exactly what the IGBC is doing today, is to promoting the idea of what was my ancient cities. I studied in a place called Banaras. I don't know how many of you have been there, but still the oldest living city on the planet. It was built probably 5,000 years ago and still there, still works. May not be as efficiently, but still works. They were the magic that my great, great ancestors knew how to design right, what will be doable, what will be sustainable. I grew up in Old Delhi. The model here was shop below, house above. How can we find something more sustainable by doing that? We adopted the same model. And I heard in the morning about how can the movement be all inclusive. Very proud what ISTRO has done for the nation brought the space technology at affordable cost. The great importance, and I was very ha happy to hear from Kiran Kumarji, that India can only afford, India can only prosper if we concentrate on making it affordable. Ladies and gentlemen, this is exactly what we are doing in our IGBC, is to creating a model for the cities where the EWS and LIG, the people who serve you, were necessary for your day-to-day -day working. Their children will go to the same school as your and mine go. They will go to a green school. They will work in a green factory. They will commute by green methods. And I'd like to share with you what we have been able to accomplish. You are in the city near Delhi. You have seen the model of DMRC, Delhi Mumbai Rail Corporation, how successfully they have been able to implement in their city of Delhi where everybody knows the Prime Minister of India. If you touch a land, they will say, I'll complete to the Prime Minister of India. You can't touch my land. They still did it. The DMRC has been highly successful model. I approach them that we have a model for making them green stations. Million people, nearly three million people come to Delhi every day by Delhi Metro. Will they experience what I experienced as a young child in 1930s? sustainability. Don't create waste. Conserve. Use what you require. Don't have need much beyond your wants. The wants and needs should be similar. We learned that as children. And I'm very glad to share with you, DMRC took on themselves that every station of DMRC will become a green station. What does it mean? It means they'll consume the lowest possible energy for the station, for the infrastructure. They'll consume minimum amount of water. And you are all experts in infrastructure. You are aware of that India is one of the most water deficient nation on the planet. Our doing. In the last 50 years, the Ganga that we worship, we have made it a sewage canal. My class met after 50 year class reunion. The Ganges from which I brought a glass bottle of water has today become a stinking canal. That's what we have contributed, our generation has contributed on the planet. Is this what we want to leave behind for the next generation of children who are yet to be born in India? Answer is no. The great news is, Prime Minister, when he came into power, he announced a special ministry for revival of Ganga. Why is it important? You may not know about it, I know. 400 million people out of my 1.2 billion people in some way depend upon the Ganges. If Ganges were to die, which could happen as Jamna is dying, 
what will happen to these 400 million people? They'll move inwards. Can you imagine the chaos it will create if those 400 million people had no daily living because there is no gains? So I'm very glad that that is happening and my company, AECOM, is very much involved in parts of revival of the Ganges because we already have the experience of resurrecting the river of life in Thailand. So great hope, the great opportunity for us to be able to contribute into the nation's future. We heard from the morning some amazing thought, thought leaders what they see India to be, what I see India to be. I like to share with you what we have been able to do in the IGBC starting from the 20,000 square feet of green building in 2003. As I speak to you, I'm very proud to be an Indian, to be able to bring India to 3.5 billion square feet of building registered to become green in our country. Yeah, you should give a big clap to the nation. This is what our nation has done. But that's not good enough because we are still doing only about 10% of the building coming up in the country becoming green. So when the Prime Minister announced 100 smart cities, I wrote a small mail to Prime Minister that, sir, no two people will have the same definition for a smart city. But all smart cities start with a green city. And 1.2 billion Indians will say the same city, same definition for a green city. So can we make it a green smart city? And I'm very glad to share with you, 15 days later, as nobody, I got a letter from PMO saying, yes, India will make 100 green smart cities. Beyond that, 400 stations are becoming Amrut stations. We are on the upsurge. We are now talking of green villages. India has no choice but to adopt green infrastructure in terms of water, in terms of energy, in terms of not creating waste, recycle every bit of our solid waste, and that's what the green city is all about. Is it doable? Answer is yes. Our company, AECOM, is involved in the city of Dhulera, and I'm very glad Greg presented something about AECOM, what we are doing in the country. I'm very glad to share with you the largest country, largest city coming up in the country, Greenfield City, Dhulera, with almost 10 million population will become the first truly, truly green smart city. Is it already happening? Answer is yes. Mr. Modi also had a project called Gift City started in Ahmedabad, right on the skirts of Ahmedabad. Every building in that Gift City is becoming a green building. Contributes to me many million square feet in my 3.5 billion. The more important thing is what are they doing with water? What are they doing with the energy? What are they doing with the waste? And you'll be proud to hear what Gift City is already doing. Part has already started. It's already commissioned. Some buildings are functioning. It is going to be actually the first green smart city operational maybe in a few more years to come. So my friends, India is on the upsurge. We're a vibrant nation. We have great expectation. And you and I have to make sure we continue that promise for what we have destroyed in the last 50, 60 years, we'll not only stop destruction, we'll resurrect. The great news is, if only we start pollution, we stop polluting anymore, pollution will clear up. Ganges can become clean again, if only I start polluting. Because there's so much technology known to me by reviving, reviving the rivers with the dying rivers, but the first step has to be, we must stop the pollution. All the 3.5 billion square feet building that I am talking about, green building, they'll create zero discharge. Obviously, they cannot create pollution because our fundamental is whatever you consume, recycle. You have no place to go. Earth has no capacity to take your garbage, your waste. Recycle. Whether it's water, whether it's solid, every drop, every ounce has to be recycled. That's exactly what our 3.5 billion square feet in the country is doing. No wastewater, 100% capturing of the rainwater, very low energy consumption, and we have set our guideline for hospital, hotel, homes, offices, what is the maximum energy you can consume, and we are going beyond. The great news is 
the community at large has taken up green as their baby, as their endorsement that we have to make a difference. It's our generation which can make a difference and ensure the future generation in India will still have birds, will still have flowers, will still have trees, will still have flowing water. And someday you don't need to have a glass bottle that you see on your table, glass being sold in a small bottle. Why? should be available to me to be able to drink free, as I did as a child in 30s. You didn't go to a bottle, and certainly not plastic. You were able to drink water straight from the tap. So we are looking at the India, with your help, with all the smart te technology you will bring into the country, that water will be available, available to me. Again, we'll clean, purify, resurrect these rivers and water bodies, and resurrect the nation to become glo global leader. What is my commitment to the nation as IGBC? We have said, as you just heard from Greg, that Bentley, India is number two in the world. USA is ahead. In green building movement also, USA ahead of us. 3.5 billion, probably US is something about six and seven billion square feet. India's potential is unlimited. We are the only one making these green cities. So what have I committed to the Prime Minister of India? that when India becomes 75 years independent, 75 years young independent country in 2022, along with all else that India will celebrate, skill India, make in India, digital India, will also celebrate a green and healthy India, the world leader with, ladies and gentlemen, 10 billion square feet of green building registered with us to become green. Thank you.